So um, this was in my second area. It was after the typhoon, so we got reassigned to a different mission. And me and my companion, we were just like walking down the road. We were in a bigger city, and so it was generally when you're in a city with more like more professionals or higher class people there. It's a little, they're harder to talk to. So we were walking down, we were tracking one day, and we found this guy. We just, in the Philippines, you don't knock at people's doors. You say, ayo. So you're like outside, and you're like, ayo. And so we ayoed at this person's house, and he came out. Well, he was already sitting outside. But he was like talking to us, but he wasn't saying anything, but he was just like doing these weird things. And we're like, what? And then he came over, and he was, he could talk, but he was deaf. He had gone deaf when he was younger. And his wife was a mute. And so he was like, sorry, we um, were deaf and whatever. And he, he was like really talkative, but he couldn't hear. And so it was really hard to communicate. But we were like, we're missionaries. Like we want to teach you. And I don't know why, but when I, like the second he walked over to us, when I started talking to him, I just felt like my heart just opened up so big to him. And I just felt like I had known him before. And it was one of those times where you just feel, you know, you're like right where you need to be talking to the person you need to be talking to. And I couldn't communicate with him. And so it was kind of frustrating. And so we got our planners out and we wrote like, we're missionaries and we want to come back and teach you. And we showed it to him and he was like, yeah, come tomorrow. And so we set up this appointment and then we walked away and me and my companion were like, what are we thinking? Like, we can't communicate with this person. And anyways, we, when we went back and he actually kind of said the same thing, like, like, I, I know you, I, I've met you before. I don't know how, how, where, but, like, I have. And um, it was super hard. It was, like, a kind of a trial of our faith to teach him. And it took, like, so many, like, trial and error. Like, writing out the whole lesson before we went, showing him DVDs. Uh, we ended up, we had a senior couple, and they, we Skyped people from Provo, from the MTC. They, like, did sign language. That didn't work because their sign language is different. But the, the couple missionaries they had a iPad and so he, we could finally we talked into it and then it would read it and so we ended up teaching him and he had a rough life before and he was very open and he was telling us you know some of his past things of um it just just rough rough life um and he we just saw this change in him he that first time when we tried to teach him we couldn't teach him anything we invited him to come to church and he came to church that Sunday and um he just sat there and like he just kept we went back and talked to him and he was just like I just I felt light like I felt light I don't know what it is but I just felt good and um as we continued to teach him and continued to watch him he just became so happy and I re really saw the atonement in his life um as he opened his heart. He, when we first came, he would bring out like anti-Mormon things or he'd bring out other things. I don't think he was trying to bash it, but he was just like showing us like all of his knowledge. He was just super, um, intellectual. So everything we would say, he would like Google it. He'd tell us like all these things he learned, but you could tell us he kept coming to church and feeling the spirit, which is amazing because he couldn't hear what was being said, but just like he knew what he was feeling. And it was just so amazing. And his wife, who was mute deaf, was not happy with him taking the lessons. And she would throw away his Book of Mormons. She would, she was not having it. She wouldn't let us come over. She, and so we like, but he kept wanting to. And he was like, no, he kept coming to church. And he's like, well, I'll just come to the church and you teach me. And we were like, well, we don't want to, you know, like cross any boundaries. And he, he just like wanted it so bad. Anyways, I ended up getting transferred and he got baptized. And then I got a, uh, email from him a couple months later and his wife actually um I don't know what happened but her heart was softened and she got baptized and they were in the temple and so that was what the email said and um it, it was just like seeing his changes and then I think the biggest miracle was seeing his wife's change even though I wasn't there for it but you know I saw how hard her heart was and she was affiliated with this um this church group and they were very anti-Mormon and you know she would read us literature and she all her friends were against it and she kind of had this thing but she, because of the gospel and because of 
you know, the faith of her husband and the atonement, she was able to receive the gospel.